we've got a couple of threats around glyphosate use in our farming system. It's the most important herbicide we use, but if we lose it, what are we going to do? So the two threats we've got, one is that we have uh, emerging resistance in a number of our key weeds, uh, but the second threat is around market signals. So we're starting to get some markets overseas who are saying, look, we don't want glyphosate to be used on products that we're going to buy. And that's not really got into broadacre farming yet, but it's a looming threat. And so what I got asked to do was to say, well, what can we do about those threats? What were the opportunities? Uh, this project is a, a Commonwealth DAF funded uh, project running through the South Australian Drought, Resilience, Adoption and Innovation Hub. And it's, we're calling it farming without glyphosate. There are really two places where we find glyphosate is, uh, is really important in our farming system. One of which is prior to sowing, such as here, where we've got this green material that we've got to control. That's probably the easy part of the system. Um, we do have some alternatives we can use. They're going to be a bit more expensive than glyphosate, but we can make them work. And we actually have some trial work out that we've put out uh, to look at how do these compare versus what farmers are using for glyphosate. The other part of the system where glyphosate is really important is at the end of the cropping system. So we use glyphosate for crop topping in a number of our crops to control particularly ryegrass seed set. In this part of the system, we don't have a lot of uh, alternatives because we can't use most herbicides at that time of the year because we'll end up with residues that are, that are in the product we're selling. So if we can't use glyphosate for crop topping, and that's probably the first use pattern that we might lose uh, if we were to change how we're doing things for markets, we need to have an alternative. We have an alternative, it's called harvest weed seed control. But one of the problems with harvest weed seed control is it's more complicated, um, more difficult to do, and I think farmers are finding it a bit challenging to get into harvest weed seed control. So one of the things that we really want to get across to farmers is what are the tips that allow you to get into harvest weed heat control and to do it more practically for your farm? So what are the practices you could put in place with that so that it works for you rather than just diving headlong into it and finding that it's not really working? Weeds quite often dictate um, our, well, all farming systems really, like your, your rotation, what you want to, when you want to plant, what you're, what you're doing really can be dictated by weeds. So um, yeah, if you can get on top of your weeds and have a system that the weeds don't get a seat at the table, um, I think it does open the opportunity for much better profitability because you can just do what you want without having to think about the weeds. Glyphosate is pretty important in our system at the moment. Um, we the ability just to wipe out all the weeds before you put your crop in. That that's, tiny crop can start off from square one with zero weeds. Because um, the, we the weeds that uh, get your head start on your crop, they're the ones that really set a lot of seed. Um, they really get on top of your crop, hurt your yield. So being able to just wipe out every single weed in your paddock and then plant your crop and get the crop established in front of the weeds is pretty important. I guess the fear of resistance is a great thing to to innovate or um, adopt a new technology. So um, yeah, we're obviously a little bit scared of resistance and, and whether or not it was all different weeds, species, but so seeing a bit of research around um, uh, harvest weed seed management and did a bit of research on different systems and ended up going with the chaff decks um, to yeah, just to do something rather than nothing. Um, it's a pretty cheap way to get into the system and um, yeah, very cheap to run. I looked at some research in the West, I think it was run probably by Peter Newman. Um, he did a bit of work based around uh, two different systems uh, using the same herbicides, the same crop rotation and just plus or minus uh, harvest weed seed management. And um, using like the top of the range herbicides, um, the weeds were just sort of, you were just sort of doing a good job and just maintaining the status quo. Whereas when, he, when they added uh, harvest weed seed management, um, it yeah, started to drive down the, the weed seed bank. So I guess, and you know, some people say, oh, well, you know, if the weeds aren't really that big issue, I'm sort of keeping it under control. Well, yeah, 
when you're sort of forking out the money we are now for herbicides, if you can not be on the far tip of the iceberg or the far tip of the curve all the time trying to um, control your weeds, if you can be back here just cruising along with Harvest Weed Seed Management doing some of the grunt work and the herbicides just doing a less, I guess you, you're not the first person to always adopt that new chemistry. You can sort of get away with using some cheaper chemistry for a while. Um, yeah, and it just this, the whole system isn't pushed to its limits, I guess. Dad had done some windrow burning. Stubble's pretty important in our system, so looking to, a, to change, do something else, um, and saw the chaff lining and chaff decking option come up. And sort of, so we sort of, the first step was we did made it, make a, a chaff line shoot. We, we actually had our windrow burning shoot and we just got a bit of IBC and cut some little bits off of it, off of it and uh, shortened, made the shoot a little bit narrower and then uh, flicked the lever in our header to not put the, um, to spread the straw, to chop that and spread it. Did that for a couple of years and then, and then decided, no, nah, I'll uh, make the jump and go with the chaff decks. So the chaff decks, uh, they mount on the back of the header, they spread the, the the straw still goes out the back and gets spread and the chaff gets dropped into the decks onto our wheel tracks, our permanent wheel tracks that we, um, three metres centres, 12 metres spacing. Yeah, so the first year, I think we probably had a, a, a bit better, or not, not a better, but a, a large germination in the wheel tracks that um, th sort of thought we could have problems here at some stage, but I think that was probably um, because the sand, um, the chaff and the weeds were just put on the, on the sand. So now after several years, we've, we're sort of finding that this chaff is going back on old chaff and there's just not a whole lot of soil seed contact in those areas. So it's surprising actually how much doesn't come up in the line. So I'm not sure if those, I guess they're rotting or if they're just not getting um, seed soil contact, but yeah, it's certainly uh, working for us at this stage. Because we've got the chaff decks, like I think if I've got, a, if I had a meal and it's costing me that much to run, you need to you need to jump head first in so you know you, you you're already burning the diesel you've already got the capital cost you've already spent all, spent all the money um, so you've got to drop your comb and you've got to take every single weed whereas when I've got the chaff decks I haven't I haven't got uh, the capital outlay I haven't got the fuel burn so if if the paddock's kind of clean and and I'm um, uh, and I need the harvest capacity I'll I can lift the comb up and not feel guilty about um, not doing the ho yeah, not doing the whole hog, but um, yeah, it's amazing still when you go sampling. I do a lot of uh, resistance testing, and uh, you go out there sampling weeds, and even with a higher cutting out, it's surprising how many how much ryegrass you do chop at times. Yeah, if you're starting out, it's doing something is always better than doing nothing. Quite often, as farmers, we sit back and we sort of look for the perfect, the silver bullet, and and it can be a, a barrier to adoption. So you can sit back being a bit pessimistic about any new technology, looking for picking the eyes out of it. So um, I think just doing something is better than nothing. Like we've got, we spend, if you look at your chemical bill, it's just a massive part of your profitability and, and you know, regulation. Um, you know, if you wanted to look at uh, with it through a glass half empty eye, you know, it's probably a, a quite a large risk to our businesses um, being, being so such reliant on, on chemicals. There's a lot of positives about our, um, our chaff decks, but um, at the end of the day, the ultimate thing is, is to destroy the weed and kill it. It's gone, it uh, can't come back once it's been destroyed. So um, I'm sort of waiting, watching. The, the meals have come a long way, but yeah, until the machine is pretty much, uh, you don't know it's there, I'll probably sit, sit out. But um, yeah, it's definitely uh, an exciting space.